A new permanent exhibition dedicated to the history of the Solidarity Movement will open at the new seat of the European Solidarity Center. We will enter the exhibition through the Winter Garden, which leads to the exhibition rooms, the multimedia cinema and conference hall, the archives and a large library. The permanent exhibition at the European Solidarity Center employs state-of-the-art technology. The installations tell the visitors about the events which led to the democratic transformations in Central and Eastern Europe. The tools available to the visitors will include maps, biographical notes and timelines. The exhibition will be located on the first and second floor of the center, currently under construction, with a floor space of almost 3,000 square meters. The exhibition is divided into subject areas which introduce the history of the Solidarity Movement in the context of the latest history of Poland and Europe. The exhibition will also be friendly to people with disabilities. We begin our tour on the first floor in a room dedicated to the workers' strikes of August 1980. It will feature the gantry crane which was operated by Anna Valentinovich, whose unjust dismissal was the cause of the strike in the shipyard. In the driver's cab, the visitors can see videos of recollections of the strike's initiators. Genuine shipyard equipment will be put to new use. A bar stool will turn into an interactive learning station. On a multimedia wall, you will be able to witness images of the events of August 1980 from all over Poland. Above the visitors' heads, archival video footage of the strike will be projected on the shipyard workers' hard hats. In the back of the room, a large screen will show video footage of the Interfactory Strike Committee in session at Gdańsk Shipyard and the signing of the agreements by Lech Wałęsa. This part of the exhibition will introduce what it was like to live under communism and will provide a behind-the-scenes look at the birth of the opposition to the totalitarian regime. This part of the exhibition will be dominated by a sense of threat and overwhelming communist propaganda. Operative documents from the secret police will help visitors understand what it was like to be under their surveillance. <laughs> Initially, only very small groups of people stood up in opposition to the authorities and protested against breaking basic human rights. You will hear their recollections and reflections in this part of the exhibition. In the back of the room is a reconstruction of an empty store which will show the visitors how tough everyday life was at the time. You will come across a crowd of people waiting in line, depicted as a 3D STL stereolithographic sculpture. In this room, a breath of freedom can be felt with an abstract sculpture of white and red, which will reflect the trade union's logo in a mirror ceiling. Filled with visitors, the interior will form a living sign of solidarity. Walking through this 3D installation, you will be taken through the 16 months when the first independent trade union operated legally in the part of Europe enslaved by communist tyranny. Through the struggle for its registration and the circumstances surrounding the Solidarity Trade Union's first convention. The tour of the second floor will begin at the area dedicated to the time of martial law. A funnel-like tapered space will push you straight into a police van. Moving towards the back of the room, you will rub against the shields of the Zomo paramilitary riot police. This was a time of mass arrests and repression. Solidarity was outlawed. However, this did not stop it from operating underground. Thousands of underground publications, pamphlets, radio and TV shows would come out. Solidarity was recognized on the international scene when Lech Wałęsa was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. The changing geopolitical situation and the inspiring message of Pope John Paul II's pilgrimages to Poland encouraged solidarity structures to operate openly. During the strikes of 1988, the youth movement became especially visible. The people demanded solidarity's re-legalization. With the tense public mood and the deepening economic crisis, 
the communist authorities began to negotiate with the opposition by sitting down for the round table talks. You will feel what it was like to sit at the round table. You will find out what a breakthrough the talks were. With the elections of June 1989, democracy began in post-World War II Poland. The spectacular victory of the Solidarity Movement ushered Poland on the road to change. The changes initiated in Poland led to transformations in the entire Eastern Bloc. The disintegration of the Soviet Union led to the birth of new independent states. In a democratic gesture, each visitor will leave their ticket. All the tickets combined will make an immortal solidarity sign. Interactive screens, 3D screenings and mobile projectors will show you the story of those events in Europe. The last stage of the tour is the John Paul II Room. This is a place of tranquility, reflection and meditation. Its windows will offer a view of the monuments to the fallen shipyard workers. The goal of the European Solidarity Center is to carry the message of freedom and solidarity into the future.